Chapter 8 The Age of Smaller Kingdoms B. The Deccan and the South The Chalukyas After the decline of the Satavahanas, there arose many small kingdoms in the Deccan. The Vakatakas had tried to build a strong state but it did not last. They were followed by the Chalukya dynasty with its center at Vatapi. The Chalukya king Pulikeshan reigned here at the same time as Harsha in the north. His ambition was to control the whole of the Deccan plateau, and for a while he succeeded. He met Harsha in a battle on the banks of the Narmada and defeated him. But the Chalukyas had two enemies, the Rashtrakutas to the north and the Pallavas to the south. The Rashtrakutas were ruling a small kingdom in the northern Deccan. They began by being subordinate to the Chalukyas and did not become really strong until the 8th century AD when they attacked and subdued the Chalukya king. But the Pallavas were becoming powerful in South India at the same time as the Chalukyas in the Deccan. Pulikeshan fought a battle against the Pallava king Mahendravarman and defeated him. But some years later the Pallava king Narasimhavaman attacked Pulikeshan and captured his capital city. This was a big defeat for the Chalukyas. The Chalukya capital at Vatapi was a flourishing city. Trade connections with Iran, Arabia and the Red Sea ports to the west and with the kingdoms of Southeast Asia still continued. Trade brought prosperity. Pulikeshan sent an embassy to the Persian king Khusrav II. A hundred years later, when the Zoroastrians left Iran, they came and settled in the towns along the west coast of the Deccan and were later called Parsis, that is, Persians. Zoroastrianism was the religion preached by Zoroaster or Zarathustra as he is also called in Iran sometime before 600 BC the great Achaemenid emperors of Iran were Zoroastrians. Zoroaster taught that unseen forces of good and evil are constantly in conflict, but that finally the good will be victorious. The sacred book of the Zoroastrians is the Zend Avesta. Zoroastrianism had a tremendous influence on many of the religious ideas of the peoples of Western Asia and even parts of Central Asia. It was the dominant religion in Iran until the coming of Islam. The Chalukya kings were patrons of art, and they gave large sums of money for the building of temples and cave shrines in the Deccan Hills. Much of the sculpture found at Ellora was due to the patronage of the Chalukya and Rashtrakuta kings. The Pallavas. The Pallavas, in the far south, probably began as officers of the Satavahana kings. When the Satavahana kingdom declined, the Pallavas made themselves into local rulers and slowly spread their control southwards from the region of Kanchipuram near Madras. They had to fight many wars against the Pandyas and the Chalukyas, both of whom tried to stop the Pallavas from becoming powerful. But the Pallavas managed to establish their rule all the same. They conquered the land to the south of Kanchipuram, Tinjore, and the Puddukottai region, because this was rich and fertile. Mahindravarman, the Pallava king, ruled at the same time as Harsha and Pulikeshan. Like many of the kings of his time, he too was not just a warrior but also a poet and a musician. He was a Jaina to begin with, but was later converted to Shivism by Appar, one of the Tamil saints. The Tamil saints there was a group of people in South India at this time who believed that religion consisted of personal devotion to God, Vishnu or Shiva, which was later called Bhakti. These people came from various castes, and many worked as artisans and farmers. They travelled from place to place singing hymns and praise of either Vishnu or Shiva. The Alvars were the devotees of Vishnu and the Nayanmas were the devotees of Shiva. From time to time they would gather at Kanchipuram where, during festivals, they would recite their hymns. These hymns were W.R. Itten in Tamil, the language of the common people. The Vedic religious texts were M. Sanskrit, which only the priests and the few who were educated could understand. Kanchipuram, apart from being the capital of the Pallavas, was also a center of Tamil and Sanskrit studies. Writers such as Dandan wrote in Sanskrit, since they were writing for the court circles and the upper castes. Architecture The Pallava kings had many temples built. Some were cut out of large rocks, such as the Ratha temples at Mahabapuram. Others were built of stone blocks such as those at Kanchipuram. The image was placed in a room at one end of the temple and on the roof of this room there was built a tall tower. In later centuries these towers became taller and taller. 
If you travel in Tamil Nadu today the temple towers of the villages are the first to be seen on the horizon. The temple became a gathering place for the village. Villagers would come and sit in the temple courtyard in the evenings and exchange news or discuss matters concerning the welfare of the village such as taxes and water for the fields. It was here that the children were taught by the priests and the courtyard was used as a school during the day. When the festival days came round fairs were held in the village and dances and plays were performed in the temple courtyard.